For the longest time, 7.1.4 immersive audio configurations was the ultimate goal. Even professional mixing studios would mix in 7.1.4. But times are changing, my friends. When it comes to home theater, the average TV screen size is getting larger, and with the popularity of immersive audio formats like Atmos and DTSX, 13 channels or more are becoming more popular as well. But when it comes to the number 13, which is better for your space? 7.1.6 or 9.1.4? Let's talk about it. This video is sponsored by Crutchfield. Summer is in full swing and the July deals are scorching hot. Big savings and discounts on select TVs. Save up to $400 on select clips, speakers, and subs. Save up to $570 on select home theater receivers. Save up to $700 on select soundbar systems. And so much more. Award-winning customer service, free shipping on all orders, $35 or more, and standard delivery in two business days or less to the Continental United States. The sale begins July 14th and ends July 21st, so don't hesitate to add some upgrades to your summer vibes. Get it all at crutchfield.com. All right, diving right in, let's break down the reasons why I think you might want to go with a 7.1.6 configuration. If in your dedicated theater, man cave, or woman cave, let's be fair and equal here, you enjoy the features of RO3D, a 7.1.6 setup might be your best bet. I mentioned RO3D because it has the Voice of God channel straight above the listening position. But if you want to have a more versatile hybrid system that can easily accommodate all formats, Atmos, DTSX, and RO3D, having middle heights is a great compromise. Giving you six dedicated heights for Atmos and DTSX and having middle heights will create a better Phantom Voice of God channel when using the aromatic up mixer. Another reason is if you have multiple rows of seats or a particularly long room. So that way, any overhead audio objects will sound more pronounced, instead of only relying on the front and rear heights to create a phantom image above your head over such a long distance. You might be asking a little too much from your system in that case, depending on how long your listening space actually is. Now, here are some practical reasons why 9.1.4 might be better for you. If you have a dedicated theater room with a projector and your front, left, center, and right speakers are behind an acoustically transparent screen, I will always recommend you go for nine ear level speakers. You may even want to spring for 11 ear level speakers if you have two rows of seats so that each row gets their own dedicated set of surrounds. Although being able to process Two copies of surround speaker signals means you probably have a trin off or storm audio preamp processor, something like that. Because your typical Sony, Denon, Yamaha, or Marantz tap out at processing nine ear level speakers with their more expensive offerings, just so you know. But having those front wides is a must if your LCR speakers are behind a projector screen. Filling in that long gap between the screen and the surrounds which flank your listening position. Make sense? And honestly, that about covers the practical reasons why you should go for front wides instead of middle heights. But here are some more slightly subjective reasons from yours truly. Let me start by saying for these tests, I'm using my IOTA AVX17 preamp processor over in my theater. When switching between a 7.1.6 or 9.1.4, there was definitely more presence in the low frequency department. And I'm not talking about over bloated or boomy. I'm talking about the good stuff. Just a little more oomph in the chest area, a little more rumblings that traveled from my feet up through my chair. Although I'm still not sure if that's a software quirk of the AVX17 or perhaps it's because more ear level speakers means more bass extension anyway, because your ear level plane of sound is going to be more active than your height channels. Also, let's face the facts. Height speakers are mainly for atmospherics, the subtle stuff, wind, air, insects, rain, ambient drone sound design, music, and of course the occasional flying superhero or ship or other random accented thing. But the ear level speakers are doing all the dirty work. Sure, your front LCR is by far the most active of all, but your front wides, surrounds, and surround backs get their fair share as well. But the heights? One can argue that on average, not as active in any given mix. Here's another thing. My theater is 11 feet wide by 16 feet long with 9 foot ceilings. 
not entirely big, but I was watching Gravity over there the other day with a 9.4.4 setup. Gravity is still one of the most accurate Atmos mixes out there with George Clooney's voice going all over the soundstage. And despite only having four height channels, 16 feet apart, mounted up 30 degrees from my listening position, there were moments where I clearly heard a phantom center height image above my head. Nothing was coming out of the middle heights directly, and yet it sure could have fooled me. So there's another reason to consider a 9.1.4 configuration. But there's one thing in which a 7.1.6 configuration still wins, even in 2024. And it's the fact that there aren't a lot of native Atmos mixes out there that even engage the front whites. It is getting better though. Major franchise films like Dune Part 1 and 2 have dynamic mixes that utilize front wides. The Godzilla movies from Godzilla vs. Kong and newer engage the front wides. The Matrix 4K remaster does. Even Oppenheimer had stuff coming out of the front <laughs> uh, I couldn't even keep a straight face. Hey, Christopher Nolan, if you're listening, if you're so into IMAX cameras and large format picture in your movies, why don't you care about IMAX enhanced audio? Hmm? AKA DTSX. Don't you think Interstellar especially could have benefited from an immersive audio format? Yeah, that's what I thought. But here's the thing. There are still workarounds if you find that your front wides aren't kicking on. Try using DTS Neural X, which sometimes, not all the time, will suddenly make your front wides come to life. But the good news is it is becoming more commonplace for new native Atmos releases to include front wides. Given that home theaters are growing more rapidly, especially with this shift in those wanting to invest in a better home theater rather than make the trip down to their local cinema. I'm still saddened by this reality though, but it is what it is. But yeah, a native Atmos mix should engage middle heights more than front wides. So to each their own when it comes down to those little details. But that's pretty much all I have to say on this matter, my friends. I know this is a stretch for most people since even considering six heights or nine ear level speakers most likely means you have a dedicated theater space to mess around with. So it just comes down to having an acoustically transparent screen, how long your room is, and if you prefer being enveloped by more atmospheric effects or more impactful bass. But again, the more bass factor may just be a quirk of my pre-pro. Just saying, since you may not experience the same result. I personally still prefer 9.1.4, even though I do have six heights mounted in my theater. But that's because I hope to someday soon have a pre-pro that supports a 9.1.6 setup to really push that room to its max. Fingers crossed. So there you have it, folks. I hope this helped in your decision making when it comes to expanding your home theater into almost ridiculous territory. And now it's your turn. Are you team front wides or middle heights? Do you have your LCR behind a screen and don't have front wides yet? Do you think it might be time to upgrade? Are you possibly considering moving up to 13 channels or is 7.1.4 good enough for you? Let's have a chat in the comments, shall we? As always, this world is crazy as it is, so it only makes sense to be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them, possibly with front wides or middle heights. And of course, always be listening 